been very liberal with the time. It's 10 past 11 now. The start question number 14, I also feel it is a pertinent question. Um, I would like to give five minutes uh, to the initiator of the question and thereafter I will enter the house. Since this is the last question for today, Itachu, you may take time. <coughs> Speaker, sir, thank you for this extraordinary time you have extended. But this is a matter which concerns everybody. So there is nothing lost in extending the time. In fact, this should be the way forward. Sir, we are aware that uh, our state States. But in real developmental activities, the Nagaland has been taken far behind. There was a time where railways will be extended from Nagaland to Impal, but today Nagaland is nowhere to be seen. And whereas the railways has reached Impal, it is going beyond from Impal to the international board. And here we are still stuck. Yes, the few days ago our Honorable Chief Minister has inaugurated one station and we were so happy that after 100 years another station was inaugurated. That was a proud moment for us. It's so painful to think that after 100 years, we need to get another station. And today, more or less every state capital in India are having railway stations, railway coming to their state capital. But particularly here in Nagaland, for us, we're always taking pity issues, but what is a common objective? We find very less participation from the general public. We just had the discussion with the foreign issues. And the same thing is with the railways issues also. My only concern here is, since we have a department with such a in charge, transport, civil aviation, and railways. So, what is the role of the department in pursuing and pushing this railways project in the state? Is it a problem lies with us? Or are we going to be always happy whenever a good explanation is being given? The reason why we do not take it off just a start question number 13. Where the reason we are fond of giving with certain reply without really realizing what actually would be the consequence. So here also, I think we have been trying to give so many reasons, but reasons don't take us forward. We have to resolve those problematic reasons and then take it forward. And the sooner the better we get our these railways in the state capital. That is going to open up a lot of job opportunities for the Naga youth. It is not that the railway that is coming to our state capital, but it is going to be an economic explosion for the Naga people and in the heart of the Naga land, at the border. When such development comes, we find it difficult to take over the business or even trading activities. But when it comes in the heart of the Naga people, then it is a big advantage for the Naga youths, the Naga people, the trading communities. So this is where I just wanted the minister concern. As a department, to what extent 
extend this your power limit to pressurize the central government? Or is it just a mail given to the department that we are not in a position to speak anything or to talk anything? So uh, if our minister can highlight uh, to the extent of pressure that has been given and is there any way where the railway connection to the state capital can be expedited? Honorable Speaker, sir, let us remind ourselves that on 26th of August 2022 is a historical day for the state of Nagaland, where our Honorable Chief Minister, Leader of the House, inaugurated the Sokovi railway station, sub railway station, in the presence of Honorable Minister of Transport and Honorable Minister of PhD, Mr. Jacob Zimomi who is also the constituency, the Sukhumi Falls and his constituency. Sir, Sukhumi Railway Station has been inaugurated as rightly being said by the Honorable MLA Sri Itachu after 100 years. It is true. But let us also remember that it is an achievement of the ACTIS policy of the Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi and also the achievement of the Honorable Chief Minister who is the leader of the House and the Transport Department in the state of Nagaland. Sir, I would like to point out that this project, railway from Dimapur to Kohima, it is Dimapur to Kohima initially. It was granted in the year 2006 and 2007. It was declared a national project by boards later dated 16-5-2007. Originally, alignment was planned to take off from Dimapu. And final location survey was taken up accordingly. But Nagaland government asked for the revision in the alignment by letter number TPT Railway 9 Oblique 97 PT bracket closed dated 15-1-2010 citing the reasons of reserve forest and zoological park very high rate of compensation demanded by farmers and connectivity to the Ganesh Nagar industrial area. Finally, the takeoff for the project was decided from Kansari Power Station in Kardia Block, district of Assam, which had been always, I have been always telling about that. The railway station of Dimapur and Kohima. Now at present, the station is not in Dimapur, but it is in Hansri Park, which is in Assam, 19 kilometers away from Dimapur. Sir, I took over as a transport parliamentary secretary in 2013. And after I took over, sir, the transport department, we had really gone ahead on war footing and the program, the tentative program was made accordingly. The phase from Kansari Park to, which is Dimapur to Kohima, at present it will be only up to Zubza, 82.550 kilometers. So the first phase was from 0 to 17 kilometers, which in the answer I have mentioned. First phase from 1 to 17 kilometers, and it was supposed to be completed in the year 2021. But due to the reason, as I have already pointed out, and the ministry have also pointed out, because of that, we could only complete it and inaugurate it in 26th of August 2022. Now, coming to second phase, that is from 17 to 44 kilometers, out of 47 lakh cubic meter earthwork, 31 lakh cubic meter is completed. Out of eight major bridges, six are in progress, out of which six tunnels, 659 meters, five in progress, and all tender and work is in progress. And targeted for completion and commission is March 2023, that is second phase from 17 to 44 kilometers. Now regarding the third phase, which is 
44 to 82.550 kilometers. Out of 147.46 lakhs cubic meter are work, 6 lakhs cubic meter is completed. Out of 12 major bridges, tender for 7 bridges finalized and 5 bridges under finalization. Tender for 14 tunnels to 22,910 meter is under finalization. Targeted date of commission is March 2026. So sir, as I have said with the leadership of one chief minister, because transport department is the nodal department, a nodal agency for railways. Sir, it is the NST staff, NST officers who is taking care of the railways. So it is a central subject, it is not like state subject where the Sandra sends the money in the form of CSS and then state is uh, we also we do the contract, we do the tender. This is not the way with railways and civil aviation and inland waterways. So transport is a local department and we have requested and we have asked the general manager who is the in London, who is the North East Frontal Railway uh, the Frontal Railway General Manager we keep updating him and also requesting him to complete the project. So this is the only thing that we can do is that we cannot pressurize but at the most we can request and on many occasions Honorable Chief Minister and I myself have, uh, have called upon the Union Minister also and as the program has been scheduled, as the achievement of the railway up to Zubza has been scheduled, I hope in the coming days there will be no obstacle but by 2026 the railway line will reach up to Zubza and from Zubza to, to Kohima and then to More this is under process and I have also called upon the Union Minister to take up and the uh, Honorable Chief Minister has also called upon the Union Minister very recently and I hope in the, in the coming days that also will be achieved. Thank you sir. Sir, give you a good question. Just one minute. I would like to also know from the Honorable Minister for Transport and Civil Aviation. If after 100 years the Shukubi railway station has been inaugurated, where is this Tuli railway station? Is it not the second railway station? Secondly, what initiatives are being taken to make sure that the Tuli railway station, which is there, becomes more functional for public and private uh, initiatives so that the railways can function from there also? Because I think this year, Honorable Speaker Sir, more than eight to ten rectors of coal have gone from Tuli to, to the rest of the country. So it has become a very important port also, where the state is generating some revenue from the Department of Geology and Mining also. So I urge the Honorable Minister to take initiative and also I would like to know whether this Tuli railway station is a railway station or not. Thank you so much. Speaker Sir, my last visit to Delhi on the 8th August, I met the railway minister and I praised him and we discussed about the inauguration of Shikubi's uh, railway station and I thank him for all the support he had been giving to the Dimapur railway station also for upgrading the station. It is a much better station now and it is also a revenue earning station. One of the, after Guwahati, it is one of the revenue earning station. He is very happy about that. But in Dimapur station also, because of land encroachment by the individuals, we cannot do any expansion and therefore it will remain cramped like that. Land issues, like how we have just discussed about civil aviation, airport. Even airport, all of us we travel by air and the runway is only 2.3 kilometers which is very limited and that's why you will all agree that you have to put such a force breaking the ear to stop and it is there is danger when it rains and then it skids then we have no safety to land the plane and that's why that more extension till the river that 
land was purchased. But through our through our irresponsible officers that allotted the land to some individuals. So the individual interest is obstructing our airport development or extension. 